If I had a dollar for every time I made a video about a song that name drops a controversial man in the entertainment industry, then I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird how it's happened twice. Right? The song in question is called Woody Allen by AJR. I know some of you probably had a very violent reaction to the name AJR. Grow up already. AJR is not even that bad. You're listening to the wrong songs, like trust. When I was 14, I loved how... When I was 14, I loved how goofy the song sounded. Uh, the opening lyrics of the song is now I'm feeling just like Woody Allen, which always puzzled me because I had no idea who the hell that guy was. One day I Googled him and I don't know, he just seemed like some wacky old guy to me personally. I mean, I was like, all right, if y'all feel like a dude that looks like he's about to come bust, if he takes a sip of a McDonald's Sprite, then so be it, I'm not gonna judge you. We all have our idols, we all have our heroes. As I was Googling Woody Allen the first time, I saw some follow-up searches that like talked about his allegations but I never really looked into it because I was 14 and I did not care enough about the subject to do some soul searching there. So now I'm 21 and you know what? Maybe it's time that I start caring. So here I am, caring. Woody Allen is an American filmmaker, actor, and comedian even though no, I have yet, yet to, to laugh, laugh at a single, single thing he has ever, he has ever said. said. At his prime, he was a huge public figure in Hollywood. Allen has won numerous prestigious awards for his writing and directing. Despite the copious amounts of rewards he has received, his name is not squeaky clean. Today we're gonna be recounting all of Woody Allen's alleged misdeeds because who oh boy, this man is a mess. But before we get started, I would like to say thank you to all the love you have given me on my Christmas kids video. Honestly, I did not expect people to like it that much, but I'm glad that you did. And I remember in the video, I did say like, you know, I'm not gonna do anything like true crimey, blah, 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 blah. I know I said that, but then somebody in the comments section was like, if you find something that's like similar, then can you please cover it? I feel like the main reason though, why I decided to do this story in particular was because Woody Allen is a public figure, just like Phil Spector was a public figure as well. These public figures are still being loved by many people despite the skeletons in their closet. And so I feel like shedding light on the darkness that follows these like larger than life people, I feel like that's kind of my true calling. <laughs> it is what it is. So that's what I'm doing. I feel like maybe we'll stay on this on this track for a little bit. I'm not gonna talk about random people who decided to like ax murder their entire family. That doesn't appeal to me. This, however, this is interesting. Like I did in my Christmas kids video, I will handle the more serious parts of this video with as much grace and delicacy as humanly possible. We're gonna be talking about some heavy stuff and I don't wanna disrespect the victims that are involved. I'm definitely gonna make a few jokes here and there because that's just who I am. Call me Kendrick Lamar because it's just in my DNA. Despite this, I will keep it classy when it matters most. Also, all of this is alleged information, so Woody Allen's gassy ass better not sue me for this. I need a way to morally justify making this video because making a video about people's trauma is not my favorite thing to do. So I will be leaving the number to a sexual assault hotline in the description and it will also be on the screen. I refuse to talk about deep subjects without leaving some sort of resource. So here it is. 1-800-656-4673. Let's dive in, shall we? I will not applaud Woody Allen a lot in this video, so enjoy this while it lasts. I will give him props for his consistency. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just the consistency thing. A lot of his movies seem to have a very specific formula attached to them, and he basically repackages the same message in a million different ways. It's giving, reduce, reuse, and recycle. Actually, before I commit to that statement, I don't actually know if that's true. I have looked into five of his movies out of 68, and that's just an approximate number. It's the week before finals for me. You must have lost your dick sucking ass minds if you think I'm gonna go through all 68 of his shitty movies. I have better things to do with my life, like count every blade of grass outside or have an engaging conversation with the brick wall. Before we talk about the five movies I did pick, I wanna defend myself from the film bros for a second. I don't care about the accolades that Woody Allen has earned throughout his career. I don't know if you remember this, but Unholy 
Sam Smith Campetris Unholy won a Grammy a couple months ago. A Grammy! These awards mean very little to me at this point. They're just giving them away to anyone. So, we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna read you a synopsis of five different Woody Allen movies, and I want you to guess the themes that tie them all together. This is kind of like the Grebels episodes of Adventure Time. If you know, you know. I'm not gonna explain it because we'd be here all day. I'm learning how to cut back from unnecessary tangents and segues. So proud of myself. In the funeral of the famous British journalist, Joe Strombell, his colleagues and friends recall how obstinate he was while seeking a scoop. Meanwhile, the deceased Joe discloses the identity of the tarot card serial killer of London. He cheats death and appears to the American student of journalism, Sandra Pransky, who is on the stage in the middle of a magic show of the magician Sidney Waterman in London, and tells her that the murderer is the aristocrat Peter Lyman. Sandra drags Sid in her investigation, seeking for evidence that Peter is the killer. However, she falls in love with him and questions if Joe Strombell is right in his scoop. All right, you got that? Let's go to the next one. Stanley Crawford is a magician who has dedicated his life to revealing fraudulent spiritualists. He plans to quickly uncover the truth behind celebrated spiritualist Sophie Baker and her scheming mother. However, the more time he spends with her, he starts thinking that she might actually be able to communicate with the other world. But even worse, he might fall in love with her. Before you say this, because I was crying laughing when I made this realization, no, the theme has nothing to do with magicians. Out of 68 films, I accidentally picked two that has magicians mixed into the plot for some reason. Next movie. <music> Attempting to impress his ideology on religion, relationships, and the randomness and worthlessness of existence, lifelong New York resident Boris Yelkanov rants to anyone who will listen, including the audience. But when he begrudgingly allows naive Mississippi runaway Melody St. Anne Celestine to live in his apartment, his reclusive rage gives away to an unlikely friendship and Boris begins to mold the impressionable young girl's worldly views to match his own. When it comes to love, whatever works, is his motto. But his already perplexed life complicates itself further when Melody's parents eventually track her down. Next! God, this one's so long. That's what she said. 42-year-old Isaac Davis has a romanticized view of his hometown, New York City, most specifically Manhattan, as channeled through the lead character in the first book he is writing, despite his own Manhattan-based life being more of a tragic comedy. He has just quit his job as a hack writer for a bad television comedy. He, beyond the 10-second rush of endorphins during the actual act of quitting, now regretting the decision, especially as he isn't sure he can live off of his book writing career. He is paying two alimonies, his second ex-wife, Jill Davis, a lesbian, who is writing her own tell-all book of their split. The one somewhat positive aspect of his life is that he is dating a young woman named Tracy. Largely because of their differences, he does not see a long-term future with her. His life has the potential to be even more tragicomical when he meets journalist Mary Wilkie, the mistress of his best friend, college professor Yale Polak. Although Isaac's first impression of Mary is that she is a pretentious intellectual, he falls for her. They do become friends with the potential of becoming more than just friends as she knows that being the other woman in Yale's life is not a long-term role that she wants. An Isaac-Mary coupling may complicate matters even more with Yale being mutually in their lives. Regardless, Isaac may be able to rationalize events after they happen, no matter what those events are. All right, last one. Follows a pair of married couples, Alfie and Helena, and their daughter Sally and husband Roy, as their passions, ambitions, and anxieties lead them into trouble and out of their minds. After Alfie leaves Helena to pursue his lost youth and a free-spirited call girl named Charmaine, Helena abandons rationality and surrenders her life to the loopy advice of a charlatan fortune teller. Unhappy in her marriage, Sally develops a crush on her handsome art gallery owner boss, Greg, while Roy, an author nervously waiting the response to his latest manuscript, becomes moonstruck 
struck over Dia, a mystery woman who catches his gaze through a nearby window. All right, did you guess the theme of tonight's party? Maybe some of you guessed that they all involve romance in some form or fashion, which, you know, that's true. You know, you're not wrong for that. Maybe you were still stuck on the magicians thing and you're still thinking that magicians are involved. But there is another reason why I specifically chose these movies. The first movie, Scoop. 16 year age difference between Scarlett Johansson's character who's 21 and Hugh Jackman's character who's 37. Magic in the moonlight. There's a 28 year age difference between Colin Firth who's 53 and Emma Stone who's 25. Whatever works, there's a 41 year age difference between Larry David who's 62 and Evan Rachel Wood who's 21. Manhattan, there's a 26 year age difference with Woody Allen's character, who's 43, and Marielle Hemingway, who's <laughs> 17. You will meet a tall, dark stranger. 39 year age difference between Anthony Hopkins, 72, and Lucy Punch, 33. Do you see the problem? Because I see the problem. Woody Allen has a weird obsession with making the most questionable age gaps in his movies. Before the neck bearded men jump out of the closest bush to defend Woody Allen's honor. I don't care that your parents have an 80 year age gap and they're doing just fine. That's weird as hell. I'm sorry. People love to debunk the morality of this phenomenon by injecting legality into the conversation. Since both parties are above the age of 18, which isn't even the case in Manhattan, but I digress. If you are 20 years old and you're pining after a 90 year old man, it's weird, but whatever, right? I can't stop you. However, I am in my right to call you names and shame you for your life choices. Does his penis even work anymore? When he ejaculates, is it still jizz or does it come out as like a powder? Do his balls look like raisins instead of grapes? You better go restock the adult diapers before he wets the bed again. The biggest issue with age gap relationships is the power imbalance that takes place. Whether you like it or not, the younger partner is typically subjected to those power imbalances because the older partner has more life experience, a different outlook on life in general, typically they have more money and they are overall just more assertive in the relationship. Obviously that's not what happens in every age gap relationship. I know, I know, I know there's always exceptions to the rule and I recognize that your parents 60 year age gap might have been healthy for them and your upbringing. I'm happy for y'all really truthfully I am. Ignoring the glaring issues that could blossom from the age gap is ultimately harmful for potential victims involved. I don't care that your parents worked out. You know, just to put it bluntly, everyone is not going to be so lucky in that same scenario. Woody Allen's age gaps are very uncomfortable when you think about it for longer than five seconds. Nay, three seconds. You know what? After the first second, once it registers in my head, I'm already squinting and glaring. Cause what the fuck? <laughs> On top of their ickiness, Woody has an archive of scrapped films and short films with questionable plots. If you don't believe me, then become a slave to your studies so you can be admitted to Princeton University. Because in their library, they have boxes full of material that Woody Allen has personally donated. You know, he's basically self-reporting. He gave this information away willingly and saw no problems with it. There's this one article I read from Financial Review that analyzes the contents of Woody's scrapped works. Everyone say thank you to Richard Morgan. They were the one that made the article, so. Thanks, Richard. Apparently the papers themselves drip with repetitious misogyny, and they're all about a lecherous man and his beautiful conquests. Hmm, that sounds familiar. One of the more notable pieces in this archive is a description of a story about a wealthy, educated, respected male who lives with a 21-year-old Indian woman. In the margins, Alan made revisions, and she ended up turning into an 18-year-old, and then it turned into two 18 year olds. So now there, it's a wealthy, educated, respected male who lives with two 18 year olds. They're girls, by the way, girls, 18 year old girls. Let me clarify. Not that 18 year old boys are any better, but st still, I really think that he thought that having two 18 year olds would be the equivalent of having a 36 year old woman there, but that's 
that's not how that works. No, they're, they're not crystal gems, right? They don't fuse together and they just become one entity that's 36 years old. No, there's still two 18 year olds. That's still weird as hell. In another story, there was a television pitch about a 16 year old girl that's a flashy, sexy blonde in a flaming red low cut evening gown with a long slit up the side. I think I need a bleach bath after reading that out loud. Another short story of his involved a 17 year old girl whose 53 year old neighbor falls in love with her during a 30 second elevator trip. The list goes on and on and on. What's creepy about these descriptions is the fact that these middle-aged men are pining for these barely legal girls. Some of them aren't even technically legal. Digress, digress, digress. Other people have said this before and I'm gonna say it again. If the age of consent was reduced to 14 years old, then creepy Wynn would go after 14 year old girls or just 14 year olds in general. If the age of consent was reduced to 10 years old, then these creepy predators would then go after 10 year olds, so on and so forth. I'm not throwing the P word around in this specific instance because legally speaking, they pass the test barely, barely, but come on. Why on earth are you only attracted to 18 year old girls at your big ass age. Don't you dare give me the it's just my preference excuse because I've already stopped listening. I'm not even entertaining that. I am against the infantilization of young women because 21 year old women are not idiots. I'm 21, I'm not that stupid, but I need older men to really dissect the root of the issue here. What do you gain from younger women that you couldn't gain from women your own age? Usually the answer is power, control. Older women know better than the fall for your bullshit, so you target women who haven't been in long-term relationships before. You define what it means to be in love for them and they internalize those lessons. That damage is deep and they carry that into every other relationship that they have from that point forward. I'm not saying that all age gap relationships have that kind of abuse, but let's not be dense. The probability of that power imbalance being present in the relationship is much higher when an age gap is involved. I think the only Woody Allen movie that I've seen was Ants. He didn't even make the movie. He just voice acted in it. I remember not even liking the movie because it seems like a cheap ripoff of A Bug's Life. If you enjoy his movies and have positive reviews of them on your letterbox account, then fine, whatever. I'm not trying to convince you to do anything. I have learned that people will do what they want no matter what. If you watch this whole video and you still have undying loyalty to Woody Allen, then that's that on that. You made up your mind before you even clicked on the video to begin with, I'm sure of it. I still think it's weird how random fans will fight tooth and nail for this old windbag. Like, it's giving swarm. Like, girl, he's not gonna fuck you. Not unless you're a, a teenage girl. video, I watched a documentary that went into detail about this second portion of the video. In 2021, a miniseries was released on HBO Max called Alan v. Farrow. This four episode documentary went into excruciating detail about the damage that Woody Allen has done to Mia Farrow's family. Mia Farrow was Woody Allen's partner from 1980 to 1992. Mia Farrow had a shit ton of adopted children when she met Woody Allen and they continued to adopt children together as well as procreate their own. We are mainly going to be focusing on two of these children, Dylan Farrow and Soon Yi. For context, Soon Yi is one of Mia's older adopted children, born in 1970, while Dylan was born in 1985. Mia Farrow had a tendency to adopt children from different ethnicities. When Woody Allen came into the picture, he did not want to become anyone's father. He was okay with the fact that Mia had all of these kids, but he made it very clear from the get-go that he wanted nothing to do with the upkeep. Mia pitched the idea of having another kid, and Alan wasn't eager to parent that new child either. Then he said that if Mia wanted a sliver of a chance of him being involved in this child's life, then she should adopt a little blonde girl. Weirdly specific, but okay. Mia adopted Dylan on her own, and a switch flipped in Woody's mind. He did a full 180. 
crazy. I'm sorry, this is not an appropriate time to sing to a Lipa. But he did do a full 180 and was suddenly enthralled by Dylan. In 1987, Mia was pregnant and Woody was on his knees every night praying to God that the baby was a girl. Of course, God said, hell no. And the new baby ended up being a boy. By this point, Woody's only purpose in life was to be Dylan's father and only Dylan's father. If this was any other person, then the dedication to fatherhood would honestly be admirable. My father was kind of the same way towards me. Uh, he vowed to make my life as plentiful as possible. Look, dad, all that hard work has added up to this. Your daughter being an aspiring YouTuber. What a lucrative career with nowhere to go but but up. Woody Allen is nothing like my noble father. He was so obsessed with Dylan that it was borderline creepy. Borderline? No, no, it was, it was very creepy. Insanely creepy, very creepy. When he visited Mia, he would only hang out with Dylan and minimally interact with the other kids. Dylan would grow up feeling smothered by her creepy ass father. She used to be this happy-go-lucky kid, but then she slowly started to become more shy and reserved. Dylan would frequently hide when she heard that her father was around, like y'all, it was bad. Woody's version of showing affection was very inappropriate. He would frequently be caught with his face in Dylan's lap. He cuddled Dylan while only wearing underwear and thumb sucking was involved at one point. It was, it was strange, but. Helen Keller could have told you that. These weird actions all came to a boiling point on August 4th, 1992. When Mia was absent from the house and the kids were being babysat, the babysitter allegedly witnessed an inappropriate encounter between Woody and Dylan. The next day, Mia Farrow asked Dylan what had happened the day prior. A then seven-year-old Dylan told her mother that her father had taken her to the attic of the home and sexually assaulted her. Mia had recorded this confession and it was later used in the investigation against Woody Allen. The babysitter also told Mia about the inappropriate encounter that she had witnessed that day as well. The biggest counter argument that was presented in court against Mia Farrow was that Mia had coached Dylan into fabricating the story as a form of revenge. At this point, you're probably wondering, why would Mia enact her revenge on Woody Allen? This is when Sunyi enters the picture. Sunyi is Mia Farrow's adopted child. Woody Allen had adopted some of the children, but Sunyi was not one of them. Seven months before the events of August 4th, Mia had found a stack of Polaroids at Woody Allen's apartment. They were naked photos of a then 21-year-old Sunni. For reference, Woody was in his 50s when these pictures were found. Alan confesses to having an affair and Homeboy says that he was in love with Sunni, his girlfriend's adopted daughter. <sighs> what a fucking bozo, man. Love is love, sure, I get that, whatever, but this relationship tore the family apart. While all this shit was happening, the child abuse case against Woody Allen had begun. I highly recommend watching Allen v. Farrow if you want all of the details of the trial, as well as just the details of the events that I have mentioned before. There's a lot of evidence being presented that negatively impacted Woody's defense. There were recorded phone calls, the videotaped confession that Mia recorded of Dylan, and testimonies from the people that were in the house that day. Even though there was probable cause to prosecute Woody Allen, he was never prosecuted because the attorney at the time wanted to spare Dylan the trauma of going to trial. Everyone and their mama was convinced that he did it though, but naturally Woody took this as a form of exoneration. While this case was happening, a separate custody battle was also taking place between Woody and Mia. Of course Woody lost the custody battle because why the hell would Mia need to lose custody of her children? As far as anyone could tell, Mia Farrow was a great mother. The whole thing was just ridiculous, honestly. Woody would attempt to appeal the custody case, but nobody was giving him the time of day. Like, boohoo, you lost the case, girl, go home. On December 23rd, 1997, Woody Allen married Suni. They're still married to this day, by the way. Woody Allen is currently 87 and Suni is pushing 50, I think. I wonder what she's gonna do when that fossil passes away. It's honestly a miracle that he's been kicking it around for this long, but eh, evil never dies, I guess. Not that I'm praying for his downfall because listen, I refuse to put any amount of energy into ugly people, but he's 87. It's gonna happen any day now. <laughs> Though my fear is that he's gonna croak 
right before this video comes out, and now I'm the bad guy for speaking ill of the dead. Am I the asshole for uploading a negative YouTube video about a man that literally just passed away? Woody has always denied the allegations, like a broken record. He will take that denial to the grave, which again, <laughs> could happen any day now. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll stop bringing it up. Time passes, people forget, Woody continues to make awful movies, and life goes on. That's a BTS song. Occasionally a family member says something against Woody Allen and typically that snide comment comes from Ronan Farrow. Ronan was the biological child that ended up being the boy, even though Woody was probably doing multiple blood rituals in order to summon a girl in Mia Farrow's womb. On Father's Day in 2012, Ronan tweeted, Happy Father's Day! or as they call it in my family, happy brother-in-law's day. It's got jokes. It's clear who the comedian of the family is and it's definitely not Woody Allen. That's not even the only time that Ronan does this. In 2014, Woody Allen received a Lifetime Achievement Award at the Golden Globes and Ronan tweeted, missed the Woody Allen tribute. Did they put the part where a woman publicly confirmed he molested her at age seven before or after? Annie Hall. Ugh, oh, he's funny. Speaking of 2014, 2014 was a very active year for the family. Dylan re-exposes Woody Allen once again by recounting the events of August 4th, 1992. Her mother publicly supports Dylan, but some family members were not on her side. Moses Farrow is Dylan's older brother, and he publicly denounces the accusations. He goes to paint a narrative that Mia Farrow had brainwashed the kids into hating Woody Allen and said that Mia was a bully. It wasn't just him either. Actors like Alec Baldwin publicly defended Woody Allen. I don't know why Alec is speaking as if his old ass isn't next. Babe, you're pushing 70. Let's focus on which retirement home you're gonna be admitted to. <laughs> Despite this, public figures like Lena Dunham have publicly backed Dylan, so there's still hope for humanity. Woody Allen denies the allegations. Typical. When the Me Too movement was in full swing in 2017 and 2018, Dylan wrote an article asking the public why Woody Allen isn't being mentioned in the movement. Because of this, more and more celebrities started publicly denouncing Woody Allen. Dylan even did her first television interview on CBS and recounted the allegations once again. Guess what Woody Allen said about the allegations? Seriously, seriously guess, because you're never gonna believe it. He denied them. Again, not only did he deny it, but Dylan's sister mother denies them as well. Suni, I I'm talking about Suni. At this point, Woody Allen has pretty much fell off. Whatever. His films have to be produced and released in different countries since nobody on American soil wants anything to do with him. When Woody Allen was trying to publish his memoir, publishing houses had turned him down due to the allegations. Eventually a random company did pick him up though. And that's pretty much all that has happened up until this point. Again, the HBO Max miniseries was released in 2021 and Woody Allen went on the defense once again. It's the same song and dance over and over again. It's a shame that Dylan will never get the justice that she deserves, but I, I really don't think he's gonna live long enough to be convicted at this point. I I'm sorry, I said I would stop saying that. The public mostly seems to be on Dylan's side at this point, but honestly that could be because the majority of the internet is a cesspool of chronically online teenagers that will automatically think of Toy Story if you mention the name Woody. Truthfully, I only know about Woody Allen because of AJR's song, Woody Allen. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. That's pretty much all that I can really say about the situation. I'm glad that Dylan is finding some sort of peace in her life in the documentary. She is married and she has a daughter that she is very devoted to and I'm glad that her, she and her mother, they still have a good relationship. You know, Ronan being a good brother, even though not all of her siblings are on her side, at least she has like a pretty decent support system for the most part. I mean, I, I, I don't know her personally, so I don't know like everything, obviously, but for the most part, she seems like she's doing pretty okay with all things considered. Not a happy ending, but not a bad one. So, you know, glass half full. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thank you so much for all the love that you have been giving me recently. You guys are so nice. If you have any other old white guys that you want me to talk about, then, you know, I, let me know because this seems to be my thing now. So, <laughs> but thank you so much for everything. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the person, dislike the video, leave hate on the video. God, if you hate me, swat me, don't do that. I'm sorry, that was word vomit. Don't don't do that. But I hope you have a great day and um, you can go now.